Hey everybody, second quick edition today. Uh, as I always talk about having things in threes, crypto, equities, real estate, people ask me to do more real estate videos. So here we are, we're gonna give this a whirl. This will be the first of many in a series. So we're gonna talk about, uh, also because the audience is global, we're gonna try weave in as much global information. But remember, we are all in this very small world and Real estate's very credit sensitive. And with the interest rates going up, that has a big impact on real estate. So this video is very timely. And of course, the disclaimer doesn't matter. But a quick primer, what impacts real estate? What drives real estate markets? First of all, they are very, very, very credit sensitive. So the more, uh, the higher the interest rates, the higher or the lower the actual price of real estate. And that is absolutely criti critical. Also, demographics. You know, we have a boomer generation that are going to start downsizing houses in the United States. The global economy, what banks are doing, how much they're lending, government policies, etc., all have a huge impact on where the market goes. So remember that as we go forward. Also, since it is so credit sensitive, this is a chart of the U.S. 30-year fixed mortgage rates. And they are stabilizing above this green line, but we'll probably go a little bit higher after the hike today. And uh, the run up towards that red line at about six and a quarter to 6.4% seems possible, but strong resistance in that area, suggesting rates, rates should peak around the five and a half to six, six and a quarter percent, I believe. Any breakout above that will completely crush the market. But it's hard to believe that you were able to get a 30 year fixed rate last year for under 3%, um, and now it's double. So it's, it's stunning to see. So real estate in the United States has stopped stone cold dead. Again, because it's super sensitive to credit and because the mortgage rates have actually doubled, home price uh, growth in the US has decelerated hard and also home sales has tanked by nearly 20%, which is stunning. And again, this is all pressure brought about because of higher mortgage rates and they've put buyers on the sidelines or priced buyers out of certain types of houses. Another view of this is this is the pending home sales. They have plunged. There were hundreds of thousands of houses in contract that weren't able to sell because people couldn't secure mortgages. It's not all cash buyers out there. But uh, those houses that were in contract, many have fallen out of contract. And people who have house, houses listed, many are reducing them by factors of $50,000, $100,000 a pop as we go forward. So let's look at one thing which uh, I've been watching now for nearly 30 years. That's the Case-Shiller Index. And this is an index of U.S. national home prices. And this is between 2003 and May 2022. But uh, the key thing here is... You, you looking at this chart, it definitely does look like a bit of a bubble. As you saw, we did have a big run up in, you know, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and then everything kind of stalled out 2007. And then we had the global financial crisis, which cratered the real estate market. Great time to buy, by the way. Um, if you look at how this chart moved, uh, the best time to buy was early 2009, 2010, when there were no buyers on the market. But what's critical about this chart here is we saw home prices hitting a record high in May 2022 in the United States, and that is a record for the 40th month in a row. Prices have increased, and they increased 20% over the last 12 months and 40% over the last two years exactly. Does that 40% ring a bell? I don't know if people are new to this channel, but I put together an analysis of how money printing directly matches gross uh, income wealth, household wealth. And guess what also increased by 40% in that exact same time frame? The US money supply, boom. So here you go. The more you increase money, the more you increase the value of hard assets, which ties back directly to inflation. So that's it, QED, very simple case in point. But anyway, I digress. Coming back, this is the medium price of a house in the United States. It's still number go up technology, but we expect prices to fall by 15 to 20% because of the impact of the cost of credit mortgages. So let's look around the world and find out what's going on there too. So here, this is an article from Bloomberg and uh, American buyers are snapping at homes, up homes in France. 
searches for French properties, et cetera, rose by 37% over the last five months. Uh, this might be spurred not only because homes are much cheaper in Europe compared to the US, but also it's a beautiful place. Like for example, Cannes on the French Riviera. Who doesn't want to live there? In fact, my good colleague, C.T. Larson is close to there right now. Um, I think he should be back any day now. But again, the houses here are typically 16% cheaper for Americans and the currency is now 20% cheaper. So that's probably more like 30% plus discount on French homes in the French Riviera. So that's happening. Now, is there, speaking of Europe, is there a European real estate bubble? Uh, the European Central Bank alerts for housing bubble risk in eight countries and Spain is considered healthy. So probably is the South of France. But the ones that this report, it was, I think it was the European System, Systematic Risk Board, uh, vulnerabilities in the EU residential real estate sector, the countries in question were Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Sweden, and the United Kingdom, all having bubblicious markets. So be careful if you're in those markets. Notice France, Spain, Portugal, they weren't in that list. Now... Speaking of the United Kingdom, Brits love real estate. Just a little bit of comedy I'm going to insert here. Uh, this is a, a fun uh, piece of information. Uh, Brits say it's easier to fall in love with a house than a person. And in the survey, I think it was 49% of people can fall in love with a house instantaneously, love at first sight. Whereas those same people surveyed believe it's only possible in 40% of cases for partners to fall in love with a person at first sight. So it's easier to fall in love with the house, but wait till the conclusion at the end regarding that. Anyway, back to the UK. The UK prices rose the fastest in 18 years, and that is pretty stunning. Uh, the I think it was some Bank of England officials as well promised to do whatever is necessary to prevent rocketing costs of living from being a lasting inflation problem. So they're trying to keep a lid on uh, mortgage rates for people that want to borrow to buy. Now, that is good to hear, but the bank has also raised interest rates five times since December, and now it's up at 1.25%. I wonder what the mortgage rates are in the UK right now. But housing prices are up 13% on average over the last year, not as much as the US, but high enough. And London has actually been lagging behind uh, parts of the country outside of London, and that includes you know, Wales, Scotland, countryside of England, Northern Ireland, are all up much higher, but London is lag lagging probably because people are leaving cities because of the pandemic and they're shacking up in places more suburban. More uh, Exactly. So let's switch gears and talk to China for a second. Talk about China for a second. It's been a long day. Um, there has been a concerted effort by many in China because they believe it could be a trillion dollar property crisis. We spoke about Evergrande a few times here, but the government is really now trying to help out and prevent a huge bubble bursting on the real estate market in China. We'll talk about exactly why that's so important, but there's about a $1.2 trillion hole that covers things like mortgage risk, loans, bonds, and other payables that needs to be rescued. That is a lot of money. Um, and if there is a default, it could bring about a ton of cascading losses. And we know exactly what that looks like. But so far, I think the government is going to step in to fix this. But to put things in perspective as well, how big real estate is in China, this is from ALF, from Macro ALF. The Chinese real estate market is the biggest single asset class in the world. That is stunning to think about with an estimated market value of roughly $55 trillion. And that's bigger than the U.S. stock market. <laughs> so think about that. This is bigger than the Chinese real estate is more than Microsoft, Apple, all the thousands of companies in the U.S. stock market. And also Chinese real estate output shrank by 7% year over year, which is stunning uh, to think. So that's the Chinese market. Now, Australia... They expect property prices to fall 15%. This is a release from, I can't remember which Australian newspaper or TV channel, but uh, housing, housing prices, they do expect to drop as much as 15% in the next 18 months. And certain key markets like Sydney will be impacted pretty badly, Melbourne, et cetera, as we go forward. Now, speaking of global prices as well, there's a cool little um, analysis that you can do is price to income and price to rent ratios. And these are some of the worst markets in the world for this. Now, 
Remember, if you, let me zoom out for a second. If you own property and you rent it out, these are good place to own property if you want it for rental income. But if you're looking to rent to own or rent to buy, as a tenant, these are expensive places. New Zealand, ranked number one. Czech Republic, number two. Hungary, Australia, Canada, and the US. And again, remember, this crunches price to income and price to rent ratios. So if you have a country that has low salaries and high real estate expenses, this is what will come up here. So it was uh, an interesting analysis as well. Thank you to... Uh, Niraj Shah for this, this information. Now, as I mentioned earlier as well, divergence always leads to recession. So we are on the cusp of a recession. For those of you who are thinking about buying your first castle, hold on. Things are probably going to get a lot worse before they get better. And I do expect price to fall another 15 to 20% before we get out uh, from these clouds. Remember, stock market rebounds first and real estate lags a lot behind typically six months or so from the actual stock market. So when you see stock market rebounding, start your clocks. You'll have about at least four to six months to be able to buy your place. Now in the last 50 years, you can see here, this is the uh, new homes for sale versus new homes sold. The new homes sold falls, the new homes for sale increases. Basically, it means nobody is buying real estate. And this is the precursor to a recession and it has worked perfectly for the last 50 years. Now, in some bad news, this is an article um, uh, that talks about Blackstone is building up a treasure chest of $50 billion to buy real estate during the coming crash. Uh, Blackstone is a big hedge fund, and uh, they want to start buying houses and rent them back. There were stories about this as well from other companies, which will remain nameless last year. But uh, this is what these private equity giants do. And they believe they've, because they're so close to the Money machine, the Cantillon effect, they can borrow at very, very low rates or pull in money at low rates and snap up houses to prevent people from getting their first home. So I think there should be a limit on uh, how many of these hedge funds can take all these homes away from potential first-time home buyers. But fingers crossed, it doesn't happen. So in conclusion, real quick, uh, let me know in the comment below if you like this type of segment. Again, I believe real estate is a very, very important asset. Everybody needs to own some. Um, be ready for the bottom. Uh, I'll keep tabs. I'll create a little um, playlist for real estate. Uh, real estate is a very good asset to own. It's a very good inflation hedge. Um, it's a very good for tax write-offs. And of course, you need a place to live. And also plan your location ahead of time. Uh, this is very important. I did a video on where people are moving and where people are leaving, uh, especially high net worth individuals. So look at that video as well. I'll put a link here. Uh, so you can check it out later. But it's important to find a place that it has very good value for money, nice weather, et cetera, et cetera, and has good real estate too. And don't fall in love at first sight, despite what uh, the people in the United Kingdom do. Um, take your time. Don't buy the first thing you see. Do your research. Be very careful, very selective, because there's always going to be a better bargain out there. You just need to dig and look hard for it. So hope you like this. Let me know. I'm trying something new. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Big one tomorrow. Bye.